Greetings, everyone. If you're wondering what these two bars are on either side of me, this one is the lamp. And this one is my mic stand. Cool, huh? So what are we going to talk about today? Well, you may recall a video I did a, a while back, a few months ago, called It's a Good Time to Be a Trekkie. As for this whole Trekkie versus Trekker thing, I think if you care that much to make a distinction between Trekkie and Trekker, you're a Trekkie. But enough said about that. I don't really care one way or the other. I am just a fan of Star Trek. Star Trek fan. That term works for me. So, there was of course the new movie that came out recently, and one of the big things that I've been waiting for the first season of the original series on Blu-ray. And that's what we're going to talk about today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Now, as per what has become the norm for these reviews, uh, I thought I'd do this one in two parts. And the first part, we're going to take a look back at how Star Trek has fared on home video over the years. In, you know, it's actually been released in pretty much every format that's ever existed. And in particular, I want to talk about the price of the current set. Because a lot, I've seen a lot of comments from people saying that, oh, you know, Paramount is screwing us over, and it's, it's way too expensive, Blu-ray's so expensive, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> and under normal circumstances, that may be true for season sets, because I notice season sets of TV shows definitely tend to go for more on Blu-ray than on other formats. But, I mean, that's understandable. I mean, they charge a premium because you're getting much better quality coupled with the fact that it's a brand new format that hasn't been around for 12 years like DVD, so it just doesn't have the market saturation to justify the lower prices at this point in time. However, that said, the Blu-ray release of the uh, original Star Trek series not only gives you more content than any previous release of the original series in any format, but it's actually one of the lowest priced releases in history. So before we take a look at the now, let's take a look back at the then and see how Star Trek has fared on home video in the past. And in particular, let's take a look at how much it's cost in the past versus how much it costs now. Now, the very first release of Star Trek on any home video format was, of course, on VHS. There may have also been a beta release as well. But we'll talk about the VHS release because it was, you know, the most widely purchased. Now, I did a bit of digging around, and going by A, what my research turned up, and B, my own memory, I'm pretty sure that the first ever release of Star Trek was a set put out by Columbia House. You know, those a company that does all these mail-order deals for TV shows and movies and stuff. Yeah, well, one of the first TV shows they ever offered was Star Trek back in the early 80s. In fact, here's a look at the original TV Guide insert that actually promoted the release. And, uh, you know, you can send in your little coupon there and, and get the first volume at a discount. Now, here's the thing. There's a couple of interesting things about this release. First off, it's in, like, oversized collector's packaging, which is very attractive for your shelf. Um, it has two, had two episodes per tape, but here's the interesting thing, two episodes per tape in star date order. So it's the only release I know of that actually released the episodes in the order of star date, rather than by production or air date order, so that's kind of interesting. Now, there's a lot of debate amongst fans as to what the preferred order is to watch the Star Trek series in. Generally, the production order seems to be the preferred order because the uh, subsequent VHS releases that were available commercially were put out in, in uh, production order. They had the air date order on the back for reference, so if you wanted to watch them in that order, you could, but they were all numbered numerically based on the original production order. And I find if you watch them in that order, 
there is a definite continuity to the series that is apparent versus watching them in the original air date order, which seems really random by comparison. But we'll get into that a little bit more later. So the Columbia House tapes were $24.95 apiece, plus $2.45 shipping and handling. Which means, since we're just talking about the Season 1 release here, we'll talk about how much it would cost to get one season. One season would be about 15 tapes, with two per tape. So at $24.95 each, you're looking at $374.25 for just the first season, plus collectively $36.75 shipping and handling for a grand total of $411 to get just season one in the Columbia House two, dis or two, two episodes per tape set. Just a little pricey, wouldn't you say? A couple years after that, Star Trek became available in stores and this time it was being released as single episode tapes priced at $19.99 apiece. They later went down to about 15 bucks a piece, but we'll just say $19.99 for the sake of argument because that was their original release price. So, we'll take a look at the covers here. There was actually two releases of Star Trek in this format. There was the original release which had covers like this and I collected a bunch of these. I had, I don't know, about 15 or so. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> I couldn't find very many covers of it. I, I do apologize for that. Um, but then there's the re-release. I will just quickly blow through all 79 covers here. There's actually a couple missing if you have a sharp eye. I'll just wait for those to cycle through. Actually, while it's cycling through, we'll talk about the price. So, okay, so these were, were priced at $19.99 per tape, meaning $19.99 per episode. So if you wanted the whole darn set, you were looking at 79 tapes. Actually 80, because the pilot episode, The Cage, was released twice. First in a black and white and color compiled version, and then they found a full color print and re-released it as a full color version. Um, so if you were to get season one, just season one of these VHS tapes, you would be looking at a grand total of $599.70. That's a lot of money. <laughs> now, it gets better. Around the same time that the VHS releases were coming out, they were also being released on Laserdisc. Now, I did find all the Laserdisc covers. The Laserdisc covers were basically identical to the first uh, retail VHS release covers. Um, the only difference being they put two episodes per disc, so they put both covers on the front, which is kind of cool because if you look at them, it, sh it gives you basically the full six pad uh, transporter uh, picture, which is pretty cool. I, I really liked the cover design on those actually. Um, I, I definitely preferred them to the, the blue motif of the re release uh, VHS covers. Anyway, so I collected a bunch of the laser discs as well. I probably had about 15 or so, so I had the equivalent of one full season. Um, but I bought them years and years after the fact when people were unloading them dirt cheap on eBay. So I didn't pay anywhere near full price for them. When they were originally released, the Laserdiscs were about 60 bucks a pop. Oh yeah, Laserdisc was not cheap. You think DVD and Blu-ray is expensive now? Yeah, try collecting Laserdisc back in the day when you'd be, you'd be shelling out, you know, 60 bucks for a bare-bones release of a movie or in this case, 60 bucks for two episodes of Star Trek. So that means, if you wanted to get the complete first season on Laserdisc, you'd be looking at a solid $900. <laughs> Annette is sitting over the, uh, on the couch there and her jaw just hit the floor. Yeah, so 900 bucks. After a while, you could get them for about 40 bucks each, so they dropped in price. So then you could get the first season for a much more reasonable six hundred dollars. <laughs> Boy, can I ramble. <laughs> well, I thought I was going to be able to fit this into two parts, but um, just not going to happen. So we're going to split the history lesson into two parts and then have the final part, the in-depth look at the Blu-ray set. So tune in again next time for the latter half of Star Trek's history on home video and yeah, we'll see you there. So until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.